Anyway, yeah, what's happening guys? Um, welcome to another vlog here on the channel. First of all, uh, I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm feeling a little bit better after my little stint in a &E. Second of all, thank you for all the lovely messages and comments. I've had tons of them uh, asking if I'm okay, checking up on me really heartwarming to see you know so many people actually care about me it's really nice i think you guys are like apart from the wife obviously because she's beautiful uh yeah uh apart from like you guys you know you you guys are pretty much the only ones who who you know care about me really you know which i really appreciate i love you guys thank you for what yes we are here yes um yeah so yeah thank you for all the lovely masters anyway yes we are here at margan park in wales which i haven't been to for god knows how long uh, but we're here for something a little bit different as you know i'm trying to take it easy lately it's the, um, it's the it's a lot it's the same as same fans yeah that's right yeah i'm trying to take it easy lately uh so no fun fairs but i'm filming an attraction for you today uh here in margan park they got a civil war reenactment uh it's like a civil war day uh yeah so we've got a timetable here civil war comes to wales go different times guys things are opening and at the end of the day uh, there's a big civil war reenactment as you can see they got uh real working cannons musket fire uh, there's a few tents to show you like what life was like back in the civil war days oh look at the wife walking by there lovely <laughs> uh yeah so yeah we're here for a day of civil war entertainment living history yeah so something a little bit different here on the channel let's go wow there's a lot of people here look at these massive crowd morgan morgan park that's right so we got a couple of tents over there guys uh with some like civil war bits and bobs we got a beer tent as well love we got a beer tent we got a beer tent uh yeah so we got a couple of tents over there displaying bits and bobs and like how civilians and soldiers used to live back in the civil war days got a bit of a reenactment going on over there which you go and check out now oh look at them uh what do they call them pikes big spears javelins i think they call them yeah we're going to check it out should be a good day guys something a little bit different oh jesus christ i was loud Woo! Musket fire. Uh, a flintlock musket. Which has got a piece of flint to create a spark. Sounds like a file. 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 I must say that echoes well, doesn't it? Highly paid, highly trained professionals. Right hands, right will. These men earn two shillings a day in back pain. Look to your dresses, to your right hands. Right on. Port your pike. As I say, the pike is a very offensive weapon if you're on the other end of it. Twelve feet of ash pole tipped with a steel spear. Charge your pike! <laughs> Can I get a round of applause, please, for my big and manly pike? Five. 
are protected. To all I'll say now, anybody want to have a go? We have medics, they're just putting up a tent. No? No calls? So that's a defensive posture. I think we'll finish with a very aggressive one. March on! They nearly shot you? Yeah. They nearly shot you? Yeah. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Enjoyed that. That was uh, something different. Uh, just like showing you how they used to charge a battle in you know, the Civil War and a musket fire. Like this. Like yeah. what? Like that. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty scary towards the end. I thought I was going to get the. Uh, well, it, it would have helped actually with my kidney stones. I if, mean. if they would have stabbed me and got my kidney stone out, I, I would have helped. Uh, but yeah, that was really good. Enjoyed that. Really, really good. Uh, next, we're going to go and check out these little uh, display of tents here and see what they got on offer, guys. Have you heard any of the thunder lately? Yeah. The last few nights, the other night there has been some thunder. Not safe taking it home. Yeah. <laughs> thunder is sometimes. It's when an ogre has got earrings. And he gets really upset and he gets in such a mood, he's stumping around and he's banging things and they're ever so, ever so strong. Yeah. So they, if you're really lucky, there is someone like Dr. Elijah there who discovered he could sort out earache for ogres. So he makes some hot water with a little bit of soap in it. Sorry? And then he has them with a head on their side and what, when it's not too hot for them, which is still way, way, way hot for us or little boys <laughs> Don't like you feed you, them down here? He puts a bit of string in, <laughs> a special string, and he pours this warm, slightly soapy water in there and it bubbles away and it makes them grumble, but in another way it calms them down because it's soothing. And then just as it's starting to set, all of a moment, you hear a... That's got to be painful. Because they're ogres, we melt these down into candles because they burn ever so well. Did you know earwax burns very, very well? It does. Ooh. It does. So, but, but ogres are slightly magical, you see. They, they come from magic times. So any candles made with ogre's earwax um, might just bring you a bit of luck. Oh, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. The ogre. They come up with all sorts of stories, Steady. you see. Because if we got caught stealing church candles that have been burnt, we'd be in awful trouble. Yeah. So we have to tell everybody about the ogres instead. We Do will. you like an ogre's candle? It's not really earwax. <laughs> Do you want an ogre candle? Yeah, oh. so tell your friends at school. What do you say? Story. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, check this out, guys. So we don't have people stealing, you know, taking old church candles. It's an new, ogre it's candle. Ogres, it's ogre's earwax turned into because earwax burns really well. <laughs> and as for the giants, well, I don't know if either of you have seen at school about Romans yet and some of the stuff they use, but Roman soldiers used to have a little spoon thing to take the wax out of their ears and that's for true got to be better than cotton buds these yeah. days yeah but giants when oh we get look at giants those come by these are nice and clean yeah they go in that's a narrow ear canal can go in and scoop it up that's for giants one, ears can have, he can have a really good rustle around with this one uh, really, one with biggies i've got big lobes but one that's got big ear canals for digging giants ear waxes out no giants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's big, isn't it? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it's like an ogre candle, earwax candle from ogres. So Shrek, I've got your earwax. Yes. Yes, I've got Shrek's earwax. I know that one already. If you know Shrek. I will. 
Lovely, thank you very much. You're thank you for your time. Oh, really good. <laughs> yeah, I love how they uh, kind of get into the spirit of it. They kind of dress up um, as they would back in the day. And I've got Shrek's earwax. That's Shrek's earwax, Oliver. <laughs> From Shrek, that is. Shrek's earwax. <laughs> Yeah. What does it smell like? <laughs> it smells like... What does it smell like? Candle. Oh, yeah. wax. <laughs> <laughs> so Keep it on your pocket. Right. So you've got a nice little music tent here. I'm guessing that it keeps the soldiers happy, civilians happy that would have lived in this camp in the Civil War. And kind of got a guy on a flute, bit of a trumpet. And we've got more musket fire going on over there. Loads of it. Oh uh, yeah, so check this out. We've also got a Civil War dog. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Kind of a Civil War bag fight going on there, I think. Got a bit of a cooking stand here, guys. What they would have used, they got the old log, uh, log fire over there. It's gonna be like soup or something in there. Like Utensils, boil things like that. Water. Yeah, boil water. That was the old uh, cooker, Oliver. Oh. Not the cooker we got in the house. That's how they used to cook food on a campfire in pots. We got a different one. Yeah, we got a we got a modern oven. They are the old uh, oven. Uh, well, not an oven, kind of a campfire. What do you call it, Ryan? Well, a cauldron, I would call that's it, it. That's but that's a only a cauldron. I don't yeah, know. that's a cauldron. Yeah, very cool. I love the way they've, they've, they've displayed all the tents. Looks really good. How are we, guys? Check these out. Vegetables. Vegetables. That's right. Vegetables, all of it. Yeah. Go turn around. Turn around. Turn around. There you go. Say to the camera what they are. Vegetables. All of a cam. Yeah, a few vegetables with there, guys. So I take it this is the food tent where they prepare all the food and everything for the uh, civilians. I love it, it's really cool. I love all the old like, you know, Civil War clothing and everything. Fascinating. Okay, but this is weird. Are we? Hello sir, what would you like to know? I take it you're the potter. No, 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 I don't make this. This is what you'd find in a typical 17th century kitchen. Oh, okay. So, Oh, see, we've got lavender there. Ah, we've got lavender there and we've got rose petals there. Okay. Because what I'm trying to do there is to make rose water. Make rose water. Rose water. It's a distant... Distillation isn't quite the right word for it. In the middle unit, it's full of rose petals that I steeped earlier this morning. And the top unit has a lip inside it. Yeah. So it'll condense up, come down, and hopefully at some point it'll start dripping out the nozzle in the front. Hopefully. Hopefully. It That's does, the plan. It does take a while and you never get very much out of it. So what would you drink rose water for? Oh no, 
you use it for making marzipan. Oh, marzipan. Yes, lots oh, of 17th wow. century recipes call for rose water. Um, yeah, people buy it ready-made these days. But it, there are 17th century cookery books, not just the, the, the old family ones, printed cookery books. And for every recipe that involves marzipan, it always says rose water. Um, Tomorrow, Zoe is but she should be making marzipan from the rose water I'm making today. So I've got to make some for her, so yeah. It's... Oh, brilliant, yeah, kind of making rose water by there, guys. Uh, like I said, it takes a bit of time. It used to make marzipan. You can use it for soap. Yeah, it's got the skin, it? Yes. And perfuming. Um, lavender is good for repelling moths. Yeah, lots of dogs here today. Yeah, enjoyed that. Right? It's really cool. It's got the smell of campfire. Everyone's dressed in like Civil War outfits. Really interesting. Like multiple tents for all different purposes. You know, you got the, uh, the the tent that cooks food for the camp. You got the clothes makers. You got the ones that make marzipan or rose water. And you think, you know, we just go to the shop as or whatever and buy a block of marzipan a uh, gentleman there was just saying it takes a good couple of days to get rose water out of the rose petals to make into marzipan so yeah pretty interesting yeah we're gonna grab some food now what the coffee i don't know i could do with the steam milk mush i want a steam milk well, i don't know what this is straw oh no that's uh Shrek's earwax. <laughs> it's you know Shrek. Yeah. I got pulled from his ear. That did. Yes. Shrek's earwax. Second raid today. Shiny Ray Quaver. Hey. Get in. Wait. Yeah. Even though it's the Civil War day. Shiny Ray. I need to steam milk. Shrek. Steam milk mush. Shrek. Don't forget the next two to go so that Paul Claire and Keston aren't left down there on their own. So we've got another X race horse coming up this time. Can you guess which one it is? Is it Team A or Team B? Oh, well done, Steve. There's definitely a point for Team A here. Oh, well done, Emma. Well done, John. Oh, John was trying to be greedy and I take two. So, we are two points to the A team and one point to the B team. Oh, it was a very slim, thin no. oh, oh, yay! It's another point for team A. Yeah. You do a picture of the world, you can call it yourself circumference. There it is. No! Oh, for God's sake! I don't want your wash was on your jacket potato. What? He was on it. Oh, he's on my farm now. <laughs> there he is. What the hell? Wasp invasion. Where is it? I don't know. Hey, I need a sword. Oh, he's there, man. Why won't he leave me alone, Mike? Because you're beautiful. Oh, there he is. Oh my god, get away. Ah, get away. All of that, they're gonna have yours now. There's a wasp. Oh. You got wasp attack. Stop. Wasp attack. Oh my god, right, stop saying it. <laughs> hey! It's funny. Oh my god. Just go bear the sword. 
Daddy. What? Let's go get a sword. Go get a sword. Yeah. And watch your mommy trying to battle a wasp, am I? Where's the wasp? I don't know. It's, it's only gone. Oh, with my sword, shall I uh, have a battle with the wasp? He'll have a battle with a wasp. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Sword. Sword. Yeah, he's gone now, he's gone. <laughs> 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 What? I want to finish this. We'll finish it then. <laughs> He's by there, look. Right by there, by your leg. He's on your leg. Get off! But what is it? Like, it must be the perfume or something, isn't it? He's on your leg. He's on. Oh my god. I'm in cam. I am going to bloody perfume on my leg. Oh my god, watch out. I've got a dagger, this isn't fair. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh my god. Okay, boy, here, guys, you can purchase your own uh, swords, daggers, shields. I got a sword. sword. I got a shield. That's, a, that's not a shield, brother. Okay, so You're gonna get a dagger, are you? Yeah, look. Come here, Oliver. A big one. I'm gonna have this one. Game on. Game on. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm not>. <laughs> <laughs> Play ball. The way the cannons were ignited in this period was using a piece of match cord. Basically, a piece of sash cord soaked in saltpeter so that it smouldered rather than burnt. He's ready. He's ready. The match is attached to a linstock. This allows the person firing it to stand away from the gun. Can you see him? Because if you had you see the man over there? A, a, a ball down there, what would happen is when they fired it, the gun would recoil backwards. So you don't want to be behind it when it's fired. So you'll see, as they give fire, everyone steps away from the gun, so that if it moves, they're out of the way. Very long. Now, I don't know if you, anyone can guess how long that took, but it was a fair amount of time. What I'd like to do now is ask if there's anyone nearby me who's got a stopwatch on their phone or something like that, because I'd like them to try a time shot still running through all those same procedures, making sure it's perfectly safe, but see how fast it could be done by an experienced crew when they were just doing it to fire shot after shot. So when I give the command, make ready, on the word ready, if you hit the start. Gun captain, are you ready? Yes, sir. Make ready. Ready. So they're going through the same procedures, searching, wet mop, dry mop. They're bringing up the powder, this time they're using a bag. Because it's a bit safer and, loo and faster than the loose powder. Seating the charge. Putting down the wad. And ramming it home. <laughs> and then the gun captain will prick and prime again. Now I know that so far he's he's never managed to do less than a minute on this. Again. 57 seconds! Can we have a round of applause for the artillery from Lieutenant Colonel John Lilburn, Regiment? That concludes the artillery display. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. After a bit of a cannon display, guys, which is very, very loud. Fire! And we just grabbed some food as well. I grabbed some water, not steam milk, because of my kidney stones. I've got to drink like four litres a day. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, I'm going to go and check out some of the other tents here on display. 
And then we got a final battle at two o'clock, uh, which is like a big, big, big reenactment of uh, the Civil War battle. So we're going to check out some of the other tents here, guys. See what's on Another display. Another one of them. Another one of what? Them. Them. And all of us got is ice cream. <laughs> but I eat it. Yeah, what ice cream is it? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Ah, uh, right, yeah, let's go and check out some of the other tents, guys. Got the music tent, yeah, I want to check this out. This reminds me of Alton Towers Dungeons. Yeah, play doctor's mask. Yeah, it reminds me of Alton Towers Dungeons, I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like. And when we get a new one, she suffers from six months, and then she gets used to it. You can't go in a place with somebody else. You can't know. Well, without a cat, it's fine. Yeah, it's a scary mask, isn't it? What? Plague Doctor's yeah. mask. No. Hello. Hello. Hello, beautiful. Hello. I don't know what that red is over there. Oh, better than me, then, yeah. Oh. Dog Central. <laughs> Making, um, Making and clothes for them, making, doing repairs. Um, so what we've got here is a doublet, which is the sort of standard. Um, it's almost like a jumper today um, yeah. that you would wear. Is that just for civilians or is that for the soldiers? Or the so army? The, it's what civilians would wear. Um, the lines are a lot more blurred because there wasn't a professional army for most of the English Civil War. So. Right. Soldiers were civilians who were dragged into an army and then a few months later disbanded. Oh, okay. Um, so a lot of civilians would be dragged into an army with something like this, but they would also likely be issued with something like this, which is a, a sort of one size fits all coat that yeah. they wear over the top of everything. Oh, okay. Um, this is. Um, well, the standard for the 17th century it's linen on the inside yeah. and wool on the outside and what it's got in between and you can see it on this one because this is half made is this fabric this is a blend of linen and horsehair horsehair yeah and that adds a bit of stiffening to it uh, and then all of this pad stitching um, provides a bit of shaping but this will all be covered up by linen eventually you won't see this and all of these were handmade. Everything was hand sewn. Yeah, and these are all hand sewn. Everything on the sword is hand sewn. Um, so things like having a lot of buttons yeah. is a way of showing a bit of wealth off because it takes a long time to sew all the buttonholes. Oh, okay. Um, so if you look at the soldier's coat, it's yeah. only got a handful of them on because if they're making a thousand coats to give to the soldiers, they're not going to put lots of extra buttonholes on them. Um, this one is going, it's actually a slightly lighter weight summer version, the material is a lot lighter. Um, but it is also a bit fancier because it's got this silk trim down yeah. there. And putting silk on is Does that show wealth? And... Exactly, it shows wealth again. Um, and there are, there were suits made in this period, so the doublet and the, the breeches, the trousers that went with it, entirely from silk. Um, so the very wealthy could afford to do that, and they did. Um, so if you go somewhere like the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, they've got sets that have survived, made completely of silk. Um, Actual, real. Yeah. From the time. Yeah. Um, not many clothes survive from this time. It's a bit too far back. As yeah. The other thing is, is because all fabric is expensive relative to today because it's been every stage is handmade yeah you know for wool you hand shear the sheep then you hand spin it into thread then you get on a loom and you hand weave it into cloth yeah the dyeing is done by hand everything so you don't waste material at all um if you get a hole in your jacket you patch it um you keep patching it you might replace whole panels when you can't um when you can't patch it anymore you might make a smaller jacket from it uh, so it wasn't cheap, it was like use everything. Yeah, and eventually the, you would cut it down and use it as things like cleaning cloths and, and rags when you needed rags. Ah. Um, so it only really tends to be the, um, the very wealthy end of the spectrum that we see surviving examples of clothing yeah. from. There's some, ex some things like bog bodies, you know, where someone falls in a bog and is preserved. Yeah, yeah. Clothes. They're pretty much the only surviving common clothes that we have from the. Oh, from that's the cool. 
Um, so yeah. Um, oh, lovely. So this will eventually be finished and all sewn in. This is just a little sample showing actually how you make the buttonholes on something like um, like this. So you start off just by punching the material through with a hammer and chisel. Um, and that makes a slip <laughs> like that. Yeah. Then you go around it with strong thread um, to reinforce it. And then once that's done, you go over the top with the fancy silk thread, which is what we're doing here. And Very time consuming. Exactly. Mm. Uh, you can imagine going all the way up here. Yeah. So how long do you reckon one of these jackets, how, so how long do you think it would take? The, us in the modern day, um, we reckon about 80 hours of work wow. uh, went into us making this. Um, they would have been quicker then because it was their whole profession where you know enthusiastic amateurs yeah yeah uh, um, yeah you know they would have started their apprenticeship at age 12 and done it all day every age day 12 yeah um didn't have the same kind of working laws we do these days <laughs> oh gosh no it took seven years to complete an apprenticeship and so by the end of that they would be very competent um and the the actual master tailors did very little sewing at all um, yeah their skill was in drafting the pattern yeah. to make sure that it fits the client but yeah. also to maximise the amount of clothes you can get out of a piece of cloth because like I say it's expensive you don't just want to cut the pattern out the middle of it and yeah, throw away the rest yeah. uh, so that pattern drafting that was the real skill at the top so the, the master would do that and then the journeyman tailors and the apprentices would do all the actual sewing Do you want to be a soldier and join your army? Yeah? Do you want to give it a go? Yeah. Go and give it a go. If you try and throw arm on, you get to hold a sword. So Oliver is going to try and be a soldier. Right. So put your arms out like a scarecrow. Ha. Okay, now hug your belly. Perfect. <laughs> hey. Oh, look at Oliver. <laughs> How cool is that, Oliver? Oh, look at that. Oh. But it is heavy, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> wow, cool as hell. Look at the soldier. You ready to fight the grimace? <laughs> That's very cool. Is it heavy, Oliver? Yeah. Yeah? Would you like to run around all day in it? No. Nah. You know. Would you like to go to battle without it, though? Certainly not. No. I was a, a very old soldier. Uh, I'm very, very old for the Civil War. I, uh, I like, my job would be, I think, to scoop up weapons yeah. uh, either off the battlefield or out of castle cellars and stuff like that. You know, oh, okay. Two weapons and bring them back into shape so we could use them again. You know. Oh, okay. Old musket, this, uh, you see, you an old prime in your musket. Yeah. Uh, as the Civil War went on, they didn't really need because the muskets were getting lighter. Yeah. And those things just end up tripping over. You know, and that's sort of a bit like an angler's restaurant. You know. But the. Um, and you're scooping up old weapons like that, that's an old halberd. That became a sergeant's weapon. I just find it gutty, I've got it. Yeah. Why is it going Good shot. No way. Yeah. Both sides of me are drunk. Hold your boy. You ready? We're doing this quickly now. You've got to be with me. You ready? Hold your boy. Charge your bike! Come here! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Charge your body. How do you decide who falls down? Charge your body. Well, when we're talking about the other one. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Yeah. I'm so, uh, charge the horse. The block. I'm going to do that. It's not a sharp one. Look, it's not a sharp one. It's going to be all the minutes from it anyway. Yes. It's all stuff about the sea warfare. So what have you got for you? Like um, battle plans and... Battle plans and a lot of this stuff is actually to do with um, making uh, fortifications or getting into fortifications. Oh, okay. Yeah, so in the 17th century, if you look at that, they, they, they did a, an idea of star forts. And if you imagine you had a fort like that, you, sometimes it, could, it might be a town in the middle, it could yeah. be a castle in the middle. Oh, okay. Uh, and they'd make uh, these, these triangles. Now, each of these triangles had got a, a beveled edge. Right. Like this. So any cannonballs that hit the bevel would actually bounce off. But the triangle idea meant if you put a cannon there, you could cover that area. Cannons there would cover that area. Cannons yeah. there would cover that area. And because that was all the way around, you could defend yourself in any direction. Uh, now these angles here, because it was beveled, would actually be calculated of a particular angle. Um, so what, when they were making it, they would say to somebody, you want you to dig a trench from here to there, that length of that string, because there's no feet, because they, they were that were clever. And so then that angle, I want you to use this, and I want you to make the earth that angle. So they'd bank the earth up, and it's somebody's job to measure and check that angle all the way along that stretch of that, that bit of wall. If there were clever hunters, it's a more advanced version. <laughs> and uh, so if they knew their numbers, they might be giving them one of these, which was the same, where they would... Charge your bikes! <laughs> well, that'd be scary than you. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to go on the battle now? Yeah. When they measured you, they would mark your chest and then your waist okay. on the tape. You'd come and choose and then, and then you'd order your fabric. And then I'm uh, a seamstress, so I'm and sewing and knitting, making so different items pattern, for like the soldiers, like hats they wouldn't say and so hose and ladies' so corsets. Oh, okay. so many of the I didn't know they wore corsets and civil war. Oh, right, okay. I thought that was more like Victorian yeah. times. Well, there's different so times, exactly different names, so, uh, but women yeah. yeah. had support garments. Oh, okay. So you have corsets, bodies, all interchangeable. Sometimes the bodice itself, which is this piece, would be burned. Hey, hey Daddy, I did a sword battle. I know you did. So I take it you had a bed this for... This is my friend's bed, yes, this is, um, collapses down, it's been handmade, and cords there, with the mattress and it all packed down. Oh, wow. Well. It's a nice comfy bed, mine. It is. It yes. <laughs> looks good. Oh, my goodness me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> it's taller than you, Oliver. Well done. Yeah, it's really good, mine. I am enjoying today. Something no, a bit different. I'm going to have a donut now. You're going to have a donut? Yeah. You enjoying? Yeah, and, and I, I did a drum. What? I like history. I did a drum. I did, what? I like I did a drum. Yeah, what? I like history. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really good. I enjoy it. It's just, and I did a drum. You did a drum. It's something a little bit different from the usual fun fairs, theme parks, stuff like that. But because I've got to avoid uh, fun fair rides for a bit and theme parks for a bit, it's just nice and chilled. Hopefully, it's something different for you guys, and hopefully, you guys will enjoy it. You know, you might not enjoy it. The views might be terrible, but. You know, it is what it is. It's filming our little days out. Oh, what have we got, Oliver? More pieces. I'll have more pieces up. Donut. No, I won't. Have I got a Biscoff donut. And I had a Maltese a brownie. From banging brownies over there. In our little block. They're good. They're very good. Yeah. I forgot I got my uh, my pants in my pocket. Food. I'm queuing up for a steamed milk. Steamed milk mush. Steamed milk, you tart. Steamed milk, you tart. Steamed milk, you tart. Nice steamed milk as well. I rate this about a uh, solid six, seven out of ten. Steamed milk out. Steamed milk, seven out of ten. Yeah. Roly poly hill. Stay on the ground. Occasionally, they blow smoke rings with their cans. 
That was it guys, that was the uh, Civil War like reenactment day here at Margham Country Park. Uh, really, really good, really, really interactive. As you saw on the vlog, plenty of tents, plenty of like bits and pieces to show uh, you guys. You know, plenty of like uh, seamstress makers tents, food tents, weaponry tents. Like Oliver even got to try on his own soldier armor. He even got to try a bit of uh, handing some spears and things like that. And of course for the big finale, uh, they had a big, big, big reenactment battle. With cannons, musket fire, really, really good. As you can see, they're making their way back now. Yeah, they're all making their way back now uh, after that huge reenactment. Really, really good. As the wife said, it's something like you'd see on a film. Really, really good. Really thought out and planned out really, really well. The musket fire and the cannon fire is really, really loud, don't it, Oliver? Yeah. Really loud. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Well, what? Um, by the castle. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have a little play in the park now here at Margham Country Park. There are a couple of parks here for the kids, uh, which makes it a really good day out. Uh, but otherwise, really, really enjoyed it. Uh, this reenactment's brought to you by the Sealed Knot, uh, which is one of the longest running uh, Civil War reenactment companies. Exit. Yeah. Uh, this day was brought to you by the sealed knot uh, which is like one of the biggest 
uh, reenactment groups if you want uh, in the UK or in Europe actually uh, one of the most real to life reenactment uh, organizations if you will uh, the sealed knot so yeah really enjoyed it really well worth the money uh, the entrance fee family of four I think it's about 50 quid something like that 49 pounds but yeah really worth it really really enjoyed it I know you guys enjoyed it of course something different from the usual fun fairs and theme parks really enjoyed it yeah that is the end of the vlog guys don't mind hitting that like button click our subscribe button and click our notifications bell because I'll tell you every time I upload something new that is it for me guys until next time stay safe keep on trailing see ya